Hello and welcome to another episode of Beacon Wind Science. This time Beacon Wind Science is something new and we call it BBS 2.0. This time Beacon Wind Science will take you core into the chemistry. The chemistry that we do practically. That chemistry we are going to discuss this time. This time it is going to be more fun and more knowledge. So in this video, we are going to discuss one of the important factors that most of the time hinder your reaction and that can be the main culprit for the failure of your reaction and that is maintaining the inertness of your reaction. Sometimes you have seen that your reaction may not go or uh, it may give a very low heat. That may be because of the presence of oxygen in your solvent or in the environment in which your reaction has been put. So, you have to learn one very important technique that is known as degassing. With this technique, you can maintain an inert condition for your reaction and that will give you a more good yield for the reaction and as well as the chances of your reaction to be successful will also be increased. We will learn this technique through the medium of animation in this video. So stay connected till the end. So basically, degassing also known as degasification which is the removal of dissolved gas specifically oxygen from solvents or solutions and hence provide an inert environment for the reaction so that no external impurities like unwanted uh, gases can interrupt our reaction now understand which reactions needed to be degassed reactions that required degassing any reaction heated above 120 degrees celsius or heated for a prolonged period over 80 degrees celsius that reactions needed to be degassed these reactions are typically performed in a sealed tube and are often run by heating over a boiling point of the solvent and are one of the reactions which needed degassing primarily for example, when oxygen is present in an intramolecular reaction, a yellowish or a brownish color is formed, which is an indicator that your reaction is spoiled by the presence of oxygen. In high temperature reaction, oxygen can damage or destroy them. Even if a sample is taken for TLC purpose only, that time also you have to take care, make sure to keep the environment of such reactions as inert as possible. Now the another type of reaction which needed to be degassed are organometallic reaction, mostly the coupling reactions. An oxygen free environment very essential in organometallic reaction like Suzuki reaction, Heck coupling or Buchwald reaction etc. Degassing sensitive catalyst typically require 10 cycles of freeze pump thaw or purging for degassing. These techniques we are going to discuss later in this video which are used for degassing. Next type of reaction which need degassing is radical and photochemical reaction. Radical and photochemical reaction. As a general rule, radical reaction must be degassed unless oxidation is the final product. Another group of reactions which require degassing is when a reaction contains substrates like thiols, thioester, phosphenes, electron rich aromatics, etc. So these are some of the reactions which definitely needs to degas before putting the reaction. So now the most important thing is how can we do the degassing, methods for degassing and that we will discuss in our next session. First technique is freeze pump thaw. This technique as the name suggests freeze pump and thaw we will do exactly like that. So how to do it? Let's understand this. Solvent degassing can be accomplished most effectively using this technique. Now in this technique, a solvent in a sealed tube is first frozen by immersing the flask in liquid nitrogen which, which is having a temperature around minus 96 degrees celsius which is enough to freeze the solvent. When the solvent is completely frozen, the flask is opened and vacuum is applied using vacuum pump to suck all the gases and that process is done for 2-3 to three minutes. But remember, while using vacuum pump for sucking the gases, you have to keep the flask immersed in liquid nitrogen. Now after this, the flask should be closed and warm until all the solvent get melted. Now this process is repeated 3 to 4 times and after the last cycle, the flask is back filled with the inert gas like argon or nitrogen. 
So the degas solvent which we have prepared just now can be keep for around one to two days. Next method is purging, which is most widely used in the chemistry lab. However, this purging technique is a least effective way of degassing solvent, but it is acceptable for some applications, particularly when large amount of solvents needed to be degassed. As it sounds, purging consists of bubbling an inert gas like nitrogen and argon through the solvent for around 15 to 30 minutes. Now, care should be taken to prevent solvent vaporization and especially the condensation of water in the solvent by using an appropriate setup. Now you can clearly see it here how we are doing the degassing by using the purging method. First we have taken the balloon which is filled with nitrogen or argon uh, which is an inert gas and we take a long needle, uh, we dip the needle into the solvent and then we bubble the gas which is filled nitrogen or argon into the solvent. So the other gases which is mixed with the solvent can be removed. Now for the removal, we have put one more needle which is the outlet for the other gases and through that the other gases like oxygen can be removed out from the solvent or from your system and make your solvent degas and the environment also become inert. So far we have learned two different techniques through which we can do the degassing. You have to remember this thing that Degassing is very very important for your reactions which are sensitive towards oxygen. If you don't put them in the inert condition, then those reactions will not perform well. Thank you for watching this video till the end. If you know any other technique apart from these two techniques, do let me know in the comment. Also, if you are new to this channel, then do subscribe to the channel and hit the like button if you like this video. See you in the next video.